Hello, in this video, we are going to present the main contents of our paper, Run Ahead, Exploring Head Scanning Based Navigation for Runners. Let's begin by defining the context and the problem we are addressing. Our work focuses on runners and the running experience in unknown locations. To avoid getting lost when running in unknown locations, runners rely on navigation support systems. In the market, we can find a range of navigation systems providing different types of feedback, such as voice directions, using spoken commands such as turn left or right to indicate directions. However, they require the user to be attentive throughout the run and it is not suited for runners who listen to music. Visual map indications, which provide uh, provided through smartphone or watches, however, they require regular consultation, taking the runner's attention away from the environment. Finally, haptic cues, such as vibration, it can be easily missed or, or misunderstood due to the intense nature of the running activity. All these methods are thus intrusive and disrupt the running experience. To address these issues and provide runners with a less intrusive and more pleasant navigation support, we designed Run Ahead. Run Ahead uses the head scanning movement that runners naturally perform when evaluating the path options at an intersection to choose the one to follow. The system leverages this movement to provide navigation feedback about the correct path. In the rest of the presentation, we will explain how Run Ahead works, the user test we conducted to evaluate the system, and the limitations and opportunities we identify. Let's begin by describing how the system works. With Run Ahead, our rationale was to provide the navigation support that is natural, simple, and intuitive. Run ahead is natural because it exploits the natural head scanning movement runners perform when entering an, uh, entering an intersection. It is simple because it only provides binary feedback indicating whether a path is good or bad. And it is intuitive because the feedback signals it provides are understandable without mental effort as we will see later. Run ahead is based on the definition of a circle around each intersection that corresponds to the user's decision making area. Every path option is enclosed by an angle range and categorized as good if, it's the, if it is the one to follow or bad otherwise. As soon as the runner enters the circle, our system activates the head scanning mechanism that tracks the runner's head movement using a compass sensor. It then compares this angle to the enclosing angles of the good path and triggers positive or negative feedback accordingly. Whenever the runner leaves the circle, the head scanning mechanism, as well as the feedback, is deactivated. However, the head scanning mechanism is not enough to ensure that the runner has indeed left the intersection on the right path. Therefore, as soon as the runner leaves the circle, we added a security check to be verif verified that the runner is indeed following the right path. Otherwise, the system triggers a warning that invites her or, or him to go back and select a different path. We designed three versions of Run Ahead targeting runners with different habits, especially those who run with or without music. Each version uses a different type of feedback. Run Ahead Music targets run runners who listen to music while running. It modulates the volume of the music to give positive or negative feedback. The system lowers the volume when the runner is not looking at the correct path. As long as the user is looking at the right path, as well as between intersections, the music remains unmodified. Run ahead audio cues targets runners who do not listen to music. It uses audio cues to give positive and negative feedback. We selected two clips that can be intuitively mapped to the meaning a cheerful yes sound for the positive feedback and an intriguing gong sound for the negative one. Run ahead haptic can target both types of runners. This version uses vibration to provide feedback. Vibration is used only to indicate a negative path. There is no vibration when the runner is looking at the right path as well as between the intersections in order to avoid disrupting the running experience. We compare these three versions of Run Ahead with the baseline voice condition as it is the most commonly used system by runners. 
To evaluate and compare these four conditions, we developed a prototype of the system, which included a custom device and a mobile app. The custom device was built using an Arduino board with Wi-Fi integrated, a rechargeable battery, and a sensor providing tail-compensated compass readings. This custom device is connected through Wi-Fi to a mobile app developed using processing software. The app integrates the sensor data with the GPS information from the phone and compares it to the stored tours and inter intersections to trigger the corresponding feedback. All feedback is delivered through the phone. We conducted a user test to evaluate our concept. The objective of the test was to validate the effectiveness of the system and to measure the user experience with the three different run rate versions compared to the baseline voice condition. We conducted a within subject controlled experiment and set a public park for the test. For our test, we manually mapped four different tours with their intersections. Each tour covered a distance of around one kilometer, which was long enough to contain several intersections, but not too long to avoid exhaustion of the participant from running four tours. Each tour comprised between nine and 14 intersections. We, we recruited 24 runners through social media and snowball sampling. Each of them ran four tours, one with each condition. We permuted the order of the conditions to avoid any learning bias. For each test, we met the participant in the park. We described the experiment structure and used the training intersection to explain the system and the different feedback modes. Then each runner ran the four different tours with one of the researchers following and recording the run. After each run, we conducted a so short semi-structured interview about the experience and the participants filled SOS and NASA TEDx questionnaires. After the four tours, we conducted a final semi-structured interview about their overall experience and asked the participants to rank the systems in order of preference. During the test, altogether, we collected the following data. The GPX traces recorded through a smartwatch worn by the participants, the video recordings of the runs, the audio recordings of the interviews, and the questionnaires. To verify whether our navigation support was at least as effective as the baseline, we verified that it does neither generate more errors nor increase the demand for user attention compared to the baseline voice condition. For the errors, we counted the instances of a runner leaving an intersection in the wrong direction. We distinguished between system errors caused by wrong indications from the system and user errors caused by wrong user decisions while the system was working properly. To identify and count errors, we analyzed both the GPX traces and the video recordings collected during the experiment. For each condition, we calculated the mean system and user error probability per intersection over all corresponding runs, as shown in the table. For both types of errors, the Friedman test showed that there was no statistical significance across conditions. Most errors were system errors caused by sensor inaccuracies. User errors were mainly related to the characteristics of the intersections in which they occurred. Head scanning proved more error prone for sharp or close to U-shape intersections as the participant often turned their heads only slightly and not enough to reach the required angle to get the correct feedback. For the baseline condition, errors occurred at intersections with many path options, which made it challenging to map the voice command to the single correct path. We measured the perceived workload of the participants through the NASA TLX questionnaire. The analysis of the responses showed that the perceived load was similar across all four conditions. We used SOS to measure the usability of the four conditions. From the responses, we, we calculated the mean usability score of each condition. The analysis showed that there was a significant difference between the conditions of run-head haptic in comparison to run-head audio cues, but no significant differences between the other conditions. During a debrief interview, we had asked the participants to rank the conditions according to their preference. Haptic was preferred by most, by 10 out of 24 participants. It was perceived as the least intrusive. Participants described it as useful and not dominant. Even though two participants said that vibration might be challenging to perceive over long distances, we did not observe significantly more errors with run ahead haptic. This may be because the user is actively searching for information at intersections and attentive towards the feedback. Music was the second most preferred system selected by seven participants. 
participants, usually running with music, said that lowering the volume worked perfectly as it brought them back to reality immediately. Voice came out third, preferred by four participants. It was perceived as easily understandable because of already familiar car navigation systems, but also described as practical, but frustrating and authoritative. Audio cues was the least preferred conditions, preferred by only three participants. The participants appreciated the clarity of the distinct, explicit, positive and negative feedback signals, but found the sound cues annoying over time. We analyzed the audio recorded participant interviews to extract common themes from their quotes. Our participants' perception of Ranahead's three feedback modes were impacted by the type of feedback given and by the fact that it gave positive and negative feedback or only negative feedback. In the music feedback condition, using volume to provide information was liked by most participants for not being too intrusive, but clearly understandable. Music between intersections was perceived as continuous positive feedback, which made participants feel reassured at all times though it was not initially intended as such. The subtlety of the haptic condition was highly valued even by runners who practice with music as it did not disrupt the activity. However, providing only negative feedback was a drawback for some participants who were used to other devices that use vibration as positive feedback. With run ahead, people felt more active and in control since they could query for directions as many times as they wanted using head scanning. With the baseline voice condition, they had to wait for the system to give directions, which were only one time. Overall, the head scanning based haptic and music navigation conditions were preferred by our, by our participants because they were more pleasant than the voice condition. Voice commands were not considered appropriate for running. Also, on crossings with multiple options, it was difficult to map voice instructions to the correct path, especially without visual support like a map in the car. Through our experiment, we identified limitations of our system and opportunities to improve its design. To improve run ahead, we need to understand and tackle sensor inaccuracies to reduce system errors like compass drift and GPS accuracies. Moreover, our, our tests were set up in the controlled environment of a park. Hence, we lack knowledge of what technical difficulties our system would encounter in other contexts like a city center. To address this, these issues and improve GP, uh, GPS localization measure, we could, for instance, use strategies like map matching. Most user errors were caused by characteristics of the intersections. For instance, for intersections with too many options in large angles, the head scanning movement was too cumbersome and generated user errors. We might use stereo feedback to indicate on which side to scan for the correct path with respect to the current head direction. We also faced issues with intersections that were too close to subsequent intersections. While in the experiment, we manually adjusted the feedback circle in these cases, a more elaborate processing method is required to handle these intersections automatically. We also rec recognize the need to adapt the feedback circle to the user's speed to avoid feedback delays for those running at faster speeds than the one we considered when designing the system. From an interaction perspective, a possible solution to tackle system inaccuracies would be to make them more explicit. It may be helpful to inform the user about the level of confidence in the signal. The system would, for example, tell the user, hey, I'm lost too, to help him or her react appropriately. There were also situations where participants wanted to be able to activate the navigation mechanism explicitly when they could not see an intersection when in advance. We could give the user the control to request uh, information and feedback. Some participants also expressed that they wanted to look around without triggering feedback as they don't necessarily always run in the direction they look. Our system was sometimes perceived as too sensitive, generating false alarm. This issue could be solved if we could detect the intention of the head movement. For example, we could explore the use of machine learning techniques to provide feedback only when needed. Or we could also give the user the possibility to deactivate the feedback once he or she has recognized the good path. Thank you for listening.